cornering. Fast, fun, and well, a bit of a necessity. They're unavoidable, right? And unfortunately, they can be a little tricky at times. So don't worry, people. Today, we're gonna look at some of the reasons you might be cornering badly and how to fix them. Let's kick things off then with something we can fix before we even hit the trails, before we even lay tire to dirt in a turn, and it's bike setup. Essentially, if your bike's not set up, when it comes to cornering, it can obviously throw you off balance, it can pitch you all funky, and it's really not gonna sit well in the turn. So let's look at how our bikes kind of should be set up for it. Suspension's up first, but you want your suspension working nice, smoothly, and in unison. So what I mean by this is compressing almost evenly front and rear. If they're sort of compressing oddly like that, what that's gonna do is buck your left, right, and center and throw your body weight all out of position. As I said, you want both compressing fairly evenly, but sometimes you might find that the back end will be slightly softer than the rear. That's gonna sit into the turn nicely and also sometimes helps absorb the rear shocks. Obviously the front, when riding rough terrain, essentially takes all the impact first. So sometimes you might run it a bit firmer, but you can tune that rear shock accordingly as well. So maybe you could wind off if you're running similar sort of compression in terms of how it feels when it bounces up and down if you like. You could wind off that low speed compression so the beginning of the stroke, essentially, is that little bit softer. What about our tires next? So tires then, if they're too firm, essentially they're not gonna bite into the ground. They're not gonna mold and conform to what you're riding around and therefore it could skitter, and that is a real word by the way, jump around into the turn, causing you know, if you ever felt that washing out feeling or that sliding feeling. Or the same in reverse, if they're too soft, what you're, have you heard that, you know, like shrub and that's like Rap! Essentially what that is, is the tire is rolling, it's too soft. So you've got to find that balance and that is something that just takes a few runs. As a little bit of guidance for me on this bike here, this is a Nukeproof Giga 290, 170 back, 180 front. I'll run for it quickly. I run 23 PSI at the front, 25 at the back. And that for me at 82 kilos is a pretty good combo. And that's with inserts front and rear, I should say. So then, I would say one of the most common cornering issues I think people have is braking. It's knowing what to use, when to use it, and whereabouts on the trail and coming into a turn, when to use it. So, here's Painter's top tips on how to do it. So then, where should we do the majority of our braking when it comes to a corner? Well, not in the corner. Ideally, you want to do it here before you actually enter the corner. Getting hard on the binders in the middle of the old turn there, well, that's going to cause a few different issues. So it could cause the bike to stand up, it could cause your body weight to throw off, and also if you're going really fast to really slow, depending on the surface, it can actually cause a loss of traction earlier. Try and scrub all your speed that you need to get around the turn safely and as quick as you dare do beforehand, so then you can be nice and controlled actually around the bulk of the turn. But what about which brake and when? Well, if you're coming from a really fast straight into a really tight turn, you need to scrub speed really quickly. As always, you'll find yourself using the front brake the most. The front brake has a lot of the power to it and it scrubs speed the quickest. But be careful, you don't want to lock up. If you lock up the front wheel in a turn, that's game over straight away. What you'll find is when you're hard on the binders and that front brake is on, the back end's gonna unweight slightly and will potentially, and more than likely, lock up a lot of the times. Not necessarily a bad thing, because you can get a bit of the old steer with a rear on the go, but you will find that it'll throw body weight forward. So when you are really hard braking coming into a turn, and you'll notice in the turn, you've gotta be really strong in the upper body to hold yourself upright, head up, and looking where you're going. Lastly then, try not to do any of your braking in a corner or coming into a turn on any loose or slippery surfaces, because it just elevates the, the possibilities, if you like, of potentially slipping or washing out or worse crashing. We really don't want that. So you see like this big slick wet rock as you come into the turn here. I'm definitely gonna avoid being too hard on the front brake of that because I don't wanna be leaning in, oh that 360, and the front end just kind of goes. That's not good. The same with all this loose stuff. You've just gotta have your wits about you. Line choice. People generally tend to think that line choice is all about sort of straight lines and rough sections, but actually it's crucial in turns as well. There's a couple of big no-nos here. So on this turn, it's a big old berm turn. Enter in low, exit in high. Never ideal. Also, flat out in, come to an almost halt, and then just turn your 90 and off you go. Those are what you don't want to be doing. That's what they look like here.
So there you see then two rather inefficient ways to hit a turn. The correct way, and I'm gonna use this turn as an example, is with a berm, because and it's rocky to come in, I'm gonna brake before and very hard before the turn. As I enter the turn, I wanna try and be mid to at least higher up in the turn. So I'm gonna be right as left as far as I can. That way I can use all of the turn to carry my speed around, leaning into it, I'm gonna be looking out of it, no braking inside the turn, and it means I don't have to get on the pedals either, so I can carry my speed, and it's not gonna be inefficient when it comes to using energy as well, and it's gonna look like this. So as you can see then, that was a much quicker, much more efficient way of hitting the turn. I entered as high as I possibly could, railed around the turn, Spotted my exit and off I tried. If you're struggling though, don't worry. These things take time to learn. A pump track is a great place to learn corner and basics. Let's talk body position now because essentially this is having your body positioned in the correct area in and around your bike in relation to the bike and the turn. And it's something that I see a lot of people struggle with. They have too far back, too far forwards. They'll be leaning the bike, but trying to stay upright. And it's really not ideal. A good solid body position is this. You basically want to be planted fairly central, if not slightly back over the seat on your bike. You're going to be standing up. Pedals are going to be level. You're going to be eyes up, looking ahead, strong in the upper body. As I said earlier, you don't want to compress into the turn. If you start braking really hard or hit a compression, you know, braking bumps something like that, you could fall into the bike. And you don't want to be sort of T-Rex arms, I'll call it, and like baggy legs and just sort of going around like that because that's going to pitch you really far back as well. And obviously can spit you outside of a turn. When you hit into a turn, essentially your body weight shifts to the back of the bike, making the front really light, causing it to lose grip. Nice and strong, standing up, pedals level, and you're going to steer with your hips and your shoulders. So these, are gonna turn exactly where you wanna go. So being in the correct body position, if you like, not only allows you to move your body around the bike where you want it to be, but it allows you to move the bike underneath you where it needs to be. Last, but by no means least, is confidence. Now, we all know confidence in mountain biking is crucial anyway, but in turns, it can literally be a make or break between getting around safely or not, shall we say. So here is what I reckon you can do to improve your confidence. Find a corner that you struggle with and just hit it over and over and over again. Try different lines, try different braking points and try different methods of braking. You know, if it's a really tight turn, maybe a little Scandi flick, trying to get the old skid around, a little endo turn if you're feeling up for it or just really hard, good on the setup and then cutting in nicely. Promise, practice as always does make perfect. But look, I hope I've been able to help you conquer some turns you might have been struggling with beforehand. I'm going to go hit me some turns now because I'm up NATO Basin Finale and I've got to get all the way down to the sea. So thank you very much for watching everyone. Let me know what you think in the comments down below because I do love to hear from you and I will uh, of course catch you next time. See ya!